So can we actually save the planet with AI or will it just end in a huge catastrophe? Today, I will give you a look into this topic. I try to show that AI is not just pure evil that will take over the world as Hollywood tries to make us believe, but also the significant drawbacks this solution takes with it. So is AI the solution? Well, according to some of the most influential groups on our planet, it is. And they're working hard on it to make it a reality. For example, Microsoft just announced a 50 million US dollar plan. They're committing 50 million US dollars over the next five years to put artificial technology into the hands of individuals and organizations around the world. We're working to protect our planet. The World Economic Forum even called it a historic moment, but mainly focuses on economic benefits of this technology, obviously. According to them, it's especially 2018 a significant year. It's a year where, um, sorry, <laughs> it's a year where everyone starts to see um, the benefit of this technology. AI is propelled out of the research labs and into our everyday lives. But this also includes risks. We already talked about them in, the, in this course. Risks include bias, pure decision-making, low transparency, job loss, or malevolent use, such as autonomous weaponry. But today, I will less focus on guiding us towards a human-friendly AI, but more towards ensuring an Earth-friendly AI. We will, look, uh, we'll lo we will look into how we can use this technology to not only have an impact on economy and human health, but also how we can, how we can transform this traditional, um, how we can transform traditional sectors and systems to address climate change, deliver food and water security all over the world, and build sustainable cities and protect biodiversity and human well-being. So the challenges. Our planet is under unprecedented stress. The humans' industrial, um, industrial development during the industrial revolutions has largely come to an expanse of our planet. For 10,000 years, the Earth's relative stability has enabled civilization, civilizations to thrive. But now, just in a few hundred years, we have put this stability at risk. The climate change, which was predicted as early as 1900, has, come, has become a reality. The biodiversity decreases every day, and the ocean's chemistry has changed. And these are just a few challenges we as a species have to face to give the next generations a future. So the United Nations Development Goals provide another lens for the challenges facing humanity. Six out of the 17 goals apply directly to the environment and humans' influence over it. We have affordable and clean energy, sustainable cities and, and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, and life on land. But now, today I will focus uh, on several points. For this talk, I will focus on six problems which we can hopefully solve, um, solve with, with the help of AI. First of all, the climate change then biodiversity and conservation, healthy oceans, water security, clean air, and weather and disaster resilience. Taken together, these six challenges pose an urgent global, global challenge. The, the demand of humans from our planet will increase, mainly due to growing population. So, to give our future generations a planet to live on, we have to do something. The climate change. Hopefully, I don't have to um, hopefully don't have to explain what climate change or what global warming is to you. So I will skip this part and go directly to the parts where we can change something with the help of AI. So today's greenhouse gas levels may be the highest in 3 million years. And even if everyone will hold up to the Paris Agreement, the global average temperature in 2100 are still expected to, see, to be three to three degrees centigrade above pre-industrial levels, which is already well above the, 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 the targets to avoid the worst. The first main point where we can take action is energy. In 2016, only 24% of all the electricity produced was, was from renewable sources. 
There are a few leading countries, such as Norway, with a nearly 98% um, from renewable sources, but the main, a majority is still way behind. Of course, the keyword power goes beyond electricity. There's also, uh, there's also oil, etc. Um, but electricity is currently the, the, the core problem, or to be more precise, the production and transportation of electricity. And that's where AI can help. For example, with more intelligent distribution, by getting data from producers and consumers, um, it is possible to optimize the energy forecasting and building a smart grid. We can build optimized, decentralized, and peer-to-peer -peer renewable energy as systems with the help of AI or blockchain, for example. Or by analyzing the data from the sun with the help of AI, we can predict solar flares and protect our power grids. Another part of AI is a key system is transportation, such as autonomous vehicles or shared transport on demand. Um, systems which are more efficient than humans can possibly be. But we already talked about it, so I will not go further into it. Then sustainable production and consumption means a monitored and transport, a transparent supply chain and active optimization of the industry for further automa automation and in, in production, but also smart recycle systems um, or integrated municipal and industrial waste management to, de uh, to decrease the waste we produce and to further reuse as much as possible. This will not only help the climate, but the planet as a whole. The use of AI will also not stop before the farming industry. There are huge benefits of the system there. With the help of big data, we, would, um, we build a system that can predict crop yields or nutrition management we, um, with better weather forecasting, it will be possible to not only manage the crops better, but also to detect early on if there are issues with it. With AI-driven satellites, we can automate and enhance land use change detection towards deforestation in several regions. Last but not least, there are smart cities and homes. We already talked about this a lot, so we'll not go further into it. For example, um, smart traffic lights or parking system or for urban mobility management is a possible solution. AI will generally help to analyze um, a city and a home and automate urban management and planning. So then biodiversity and conservation. The earth is losing its biodiversity at mass, ex mass extinction rates. One in five species on earth now faces eradication. Current deforestation rates in the Amazon Basin could, um, could lead to an 8% to eight drop in regional rainfall by 2050, which will lead to wider consequences for Earth's atmospheric circulatory system. With the help of AI, we can get a, we can get a better understanding of the interlink on the Earth as a whole. For example, it makes it possible to predict bird habitats and migration patterns. We can simulate animal and the habitat interaction to better protect them, or if we cannot stop the dying of the bees, we could build um, micro-drones for pollination and thus also optimize the breeding of plants. With the help of satellites and AI, it makes it easier to go against illegal wildlife and capture or trading. We can also, we can also as mentioned in the part before, build an optimized food trading a food trading chain and tracking its origin. Pollution control will get simpler with AI, with AI driven simulations. We can predict them, track them, and uh, analyze it and do something against it. No, not illegal wildlife, illegal wild, 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 wildlife capture and, tra and tra um, transportation or trading, like snake trading for China, etc. I just that. Uh, I don't hope that it is the solution, <laughs> but um, I like when the, when the bees die out, we have to do something to start to stop that, like the dying of the plants. Many plants are dependent on bees and other uh, and uh, other insects, so we we need to support. Uh, we give some support to the plants. We cannot just like 
let the data, let also the planet, the plants stay out. Okay. Then healthy oceans. The chemistry of the oceans is changing. They, are, they absorb greenhouse gases, and the um, result is acidification and warming. This causes unprecedented damage to fish and corals. Over 50% of the, of the world's coral reefs have sti has died in the last 30 years, and up to 90% may die within the next century. A world without corals not only means, uh, uh, means we'll have a less diverse ocean, but it also but will also be an economic disaster for many people, especially in developing countries. Fisher in tourism will be directly impacted from this, but also coastal protection, especially in areas with frequent, with frequent, um, in, uh, with frequent hurricanes and tropical storms. The great biodiversity of coral reefs serves as an important source for new medical treatments. So losing them is not just a loss of biodiversity and species, but also loss of possible opportunities. Here again is monitoring the main usage of AI. We can automate overfishing control and catch thresholds, but also give insights for fishermen, for example, where the swarms are. AI can detect and uh, alarm illegal fishing activities and optimize patrol schedules. Further, to fight and prevent additional ocean pollution with marine litter prediction by analyzing and simulating ocean currents. Or by AI-driven robotic fish to, achieve, uh, to actively fight pollution, such as plastic. Further, to fight and prevent additional ocean pollution, um, AI could also help in form of optimized vehicles, which map and monitor the oceans, to better understand how the whole system is, in, uh, is interlinked. With help of... Um, with help this will help to use better protect, uh, to better protect habitats and conserve what is not lost yet. We can protect species, predict uh, the roots, and for example, by analyzing moving patterns of whales, we could um, like build safe routes so that, that uh, um, unnecessary contact with container ships and so on can be decreased. All these points need real-life monitoring, and with um, which will be made easier with the help of AI driven systems. Monitoring the pH values of the water, the ocean temperature, monitoring ocean currents and coral reefs. Another part is water security. By 2030, we may fall short, uh, we, we may fall 40% uh, short of the amount of fresh water needed to support the global economy as pollution and climate change affects the global water cycle. The main problem of water usage is that we tend to forget where fresh water is used. If you think about, if you think about it, most of the first thing that pops up is toilet, shower, cloths and dishwashing, drink and food production. But by a study in the US, they found out that 12% um, of the water usage in households in 2016 was from leaks in pipes. Another thing is the industry. Here again, first thing that comes to mind is farming. It is indeed a huge consumer. For example, in the US, it was about 36% of the, of the water consumption, but by far not the largest. The largest consumer is thermal, thermal electric power with around 45, uh, 45%. This includes power plants such as nuclear, oil, or coal. AI can help monitoring again. By monitoring the water supply, we are able to better manage it. It will be possible to um, simulate the supply and get faster understanding of changes in water quality. And, can and we can step in with self-adaptive self water filtration, which costs a lot and can thus lower the cost of fresh water. We can early on detect algal blooms and lower the harm this can take with it. Further on, with the AI-based monitoring of landscapes, we can forecast stream flow and automate flood-centered infrastructure. Smart homes um, can monitor and manage the water it uses. We can optimize the industrial water use predict maintenance of water plants, and gen uh, generate early warning systems for, uh, for water infrastructure. By constantly monitoring the water running through pipes, under underground leaks get detected early on, and we can fix on 
and we, we can fix them more efficiently. For example, in my village, there is currently a case where there is a huge water leak in some pipes, and they still haven't fixed it, even though, even though they know about it so like one year or something like this. They just don't know it. They, they just don't know where exactly it is. Um, and AI-driven drones make, a, a, make real-time monitoring for rivers and lakes possible. This will not only help to increase the quality of fresh water, but also for oceans. A big amount of the ocean's toxins come from rivers leading into them. And all this data will also help predict in droughts. We can run simulation for drought planning and thus can lower the impact the drought will have. Like this, we can prevent situations like, like, hap like happening currently in Cape Town, California, or the Horn of Africa. Then there is clean air. Around 92% of the world's people live in places that fails to, uh, to meet World Health Organization's air quality guidelines. According to the WHO, around 7 million people die annually from exposure to air pollution. This is one death out of every eight globally. With AI, we can optimize sensor-based air, pu air purifying systems or build smart carbon capture and storage systems. Real-time air, um, air pollution monitoring and simulation allows us to detect the source. With enough data, we will even have the ability to forecast pollution levels, which will help so not only in warning and humans, but also in transport management. Well, sounds good to have the option of forecasting air pollution, but wouldn't, be, uh, wouldn't it be a well better solution to get rid of pollution at all? Like changing to clean fuels. Here, AI can also help. AI works better with a huge amount of data than humans do. So we can, adopt, we can use it in, in the industry and in the researches to build advanced batteries or fuel cell designs. Then there's water for, uh, weather forecasting disaster resilience. The number of natural catastrophes has tripled since 1980. In 2016, the world suffered from 772 such events, like huge catastrophes like hurricanes, etc. Storms get stronger with warmer oceans. Climate gets less stable at the areas where it was stable before. Droughts get more intense, and a lot more people suffer from it. In addition to better weather forecasting, the data and data analyzing AI can also help in early warning systems for catastrophes, automate mitigation of flood risks, Earthquake uh, or earthquake damage prediction, maybe even predict earthquake itself, I don't know. All this information makes it easy to, pract uh, to protect um, urban infrastructure and buildings. This can help minimize the impact of catastrophes, and if something happens, it helps to coordinate disaster response in real time. So let's talk about the implementation. So far, it sounded really utopian what I was talking about. But actually, it isn't that much of an utopia anymore. Things come uh, starting to become a reality. People around the world um, working hard on it. It started implementing those ideas and testing them. A good example is autonomous vehicles or in-between car communication. But also systems like smart grids are closer to reality than one, uh, than one might think. Together with other fourth industrial revolution technologies such as IoTs or, um, or blockchain. Agriculture is getting smarter. Drones are already in use to monitor conditions of the crops. AI plays a significant role in weather forecasting and climate modeling. It works better with the, with the massive amount of data the climate science community already gathers. But there must be a drawback, mustn't it? For all, the, for all the enormous potential AI offers, 
for building, sustain, uh, for building a sustainable um, planet for the future generation. It also possesses short and long-term risks. We cannot just blindly deploy an AI system into the wild. This can have risks and new dangers, which are not that far from Hollywood dystopian movies. First of all, there's something that's not a risk per se, but rather a, rea um, a reality, which you already have discussed last week. It's data. If you look at those pictures, those are from IBM about this topic, you see there's a satellite, there's a satellite, there's a satellite, and here's another monitoring system. AI cannot, cannot work without data. Data is one of the key factors that keeps the system running. We're not talking about some data somewhere we don't really care about. To build such a system, we need as much data as possible. And this data needs to be stored, analyzed, and used. The risks this data gathering bears, uh, bears are obvious. So we need to find a way to store them safely, reliably, and a way where it cannot be manipulated. And of course, there are privacy issues, but we'll not go deeper into this now. So risk of AI can be divided, broadly speaking, into six categories. First of all, performance risks. This, cont this contains risks such as errors or bias. For the most part, the output of the AI system are determined within a black box and with little transparency. How do we know that we can trust those outputs? A um, AI algorithms are self-learning and continu continuously adapting. They're hard to explain, and in some cases may not be explainable to humans at all. The inability to rationalize the output of such a system makes it difficult to verify if the output and performance of, si of such a system is accurate and desirable and bears significant risks. So before we can securely deploy an AI system, we need to find a way to build explainable AI. But this research field is still in the early phases. And other ongoing research um, res Research is model bias, resulting from biases in training data, which can lead to dangerous decisions when AI is managing um, some key systems. It is essential that humans stay in the loop for auditing algorithms and um, alg algorithm outputs to mitigate these um, unintended biases and wide performance risks. Then we have security risks. Misuf misuse of AI AI via hacking is a serious threat. As many algorithms being developed with good intentions, such as, for example, self-driving self cars, it can be easily, easily repurposed for causing harm, for example, for autonomous weaponry. This raises um, risks of global safety. So we need to ensure good governance to build explainably transparency, validity into the algorithms. We need to find a way to draw a line between beneficial and harmful. But how, is, uh, but how is still open? Another security risk is the data that is used to train the AI. There we have to, uh, there we have to make sure that this, um, it is safe data. Malicious inputs can lead to, AI, to an AI that can be triggered to do unintended things. Then we have control risks. AI systems work autonom autonomously and interact, interact with each other. This can lead to unexpected outputs because they start learning from each other and also from each other errors. The things, as these things have already happened, for example, in, ex in an experiment, I think it was Google, and researchers let chat, several AI-driven chatbots with each other. They created their own language which was not, no longer understandable by humans at all. Or on May the 6th, 2010, um, a financial crash occurred, occurred, known as the flash crash. It was a trillion dollar stock market crash caused in the US by AI driven market, um, market bots. They created an artificial market inflation. We cannot let things like this happen to essential systems, such as power grids or water supplies. Further, we have the ethical risks. The use of AI involves three main elements, 
the use of big data, the growing reliance on algorithms to perform tasks, shape choices, and make decisions, and the gradual reduction of human involvement in many processes. Together, these raises issues related to fairness, responsibility, equality, and respect for human rights. Many decisions from AI about individuals are based on inferred groups and community attributes. We cannot let loose a racist or biased system. Things like a Jew hating Nazi AI already happened with the experiment of Microsoft on Twitter, for example. Now imagine such a system being deployed on a hospital or something like this. If you listen carefully, you probably already realized, realized that this also bears economic risks. The most obvious one is job loss. An AI, adopt, an AI is adopted more and more into the industry and decision making. Many human, human jobs are uh, get obsolete. Further, today's world is globalized and moves quickly. Companies that adopt AI first will may alter the competitive landscape, which creates winners and losers. Companies which could not adopt the, te the, the technology quick enough may lose their position in the market. The nation state system we have today on our planet struggles to keep pace with the globalized dig digital economy. The result, massive tax losses. Tax erosion could track uh, tracking on public spending including investments in systems that could help the planet. And as already mentioned, the jobs loss situation, this could also be called a social risk. Um, Large-scale automation mainly threats employment in transportation, manufacturing, agriculture, and the um, service sector. High unemployment rates could lead to greater inequality in society. A possible solution would be basic income, as an example. Another social risk is autonomous weaponry, but we talked about this um, in the past. So the majority of the mentioned risks are still unsolved, and we often don't really know how to even solve them. But even with all those risks in mind, for me, this system bears unprecedented opportunity. The opportunity for AI to harness to benefit humankind and its environment as a whole is substantial. It will help us to unlock new solutions to society's most pressing environmental challenges. However, AI technology has, it, has significant risks and we cannot allow to forget them. AI will change our future. It will change how we live, how we work, probably even how we interact with each other or the environment in the future. So let's take this opportunity we have and lead it into the direction that will benefit all of us. Thank you.